This one says, hello, sisters. I've been dating. We've been dating for three years now and we're set to get married in six months. Now, he's a 42 year old chartered accountant. I'm 37 and I run a salon. We've never been sexually involved because we didn't think that it was the way to go. He's an introvert and it took a long time to get him to open up. Now, he previously suffered a broken heart, so he was reluctant to get close to anyone else. We've had a healthy relationship so far, and it's been absolutely beautiful. We underwent a routine medical exam to ascertain the state of our health before marriage. And we found out that my fiancé is HIV positive. Hmm. He has become a total recluse, and he thinks marriage is a no-go area because of his status. He believes he will put me in harm's way if he goes ahead to marry me. He doesn't talk to anybody. He won't even talk to me. I've tried everything in my power to let him know that this is not a deal breaker because people with HIV have succeeded in making HIV negative babies. I'm trying to be strong for him because I love him so much, but deep down, this scares me a whole lot. But not enough to let him go. I still believe there's a way out. He has practically given up on everything. He's a wonderful person, and the last five years have been the best five years of my life, truth be told. Sisters, how do I convince him that I can, he can live a normal life? How do I get him to open up to me on his fears about the whole situation? Please help, because this one is a keeper, and I cannot lose him. Wow. Yeah, this message is... I like it. I like the message. <laughs> no. Ceci, would you want to weigh in? That's quite interesting. It's heavy. Yeah. Um, would you have gone to, ahead to date someone or marry someone who was HIV positive? Just hmm. honestly. I think I would have. Mm. I would have. HIV is not as scary as it used to be. Back in the day, it was scary you know like there were so many campaigns there were ads you know the whole protect yourself protect yourself <laughs> you remember that yeah. ad huh mm, wise up yeah. no means no means no. <laughs> oh you remember that <laughs> of course i Crazy. do yeah so it used to be really scary but now i mean it, malaria is even killing people faster than hiv is and a lot of people have been able to live normal lives even being HIV positive, even from birth, mm. they've been able to live 20 years and beyond. That no one's standing. It is very pos possible that he can infect her. Mm. But, but with technology, that can be prevented. Okay, so first of all, she should shelve the marriage. It is not priority now. I don't think it's the priority now. The priority now is to get him to warm up to the idea that he can live a normal life. Because right now, he's in a bad place and he doesn't think that, and I'm sure that he doesn't even think that life is worth living because he has given up on everything. He has become a reckless and um, he doesn't want to talk to anybody. So right now, the focus is, it should be on bringing him to the realization that it's not that bad. Mm. You should look at it as um, the glass is half full rather than the glass is half empty. From the little that I know, if you are able to get him to um, go on the, the ARVs, that is the antiretroviral mm. drugs, and he's very, very religious about it, there will be a point where he can have a, an undetectable viral load, which is like if he goes through the normal HIV test, right. you won't see it. Right. You won't see suppressed. that it's positive. Mm -hmm. Exactly, it will be suppressed. So when it is suppressed, you can actually have unprotected sex, and then you will not be you will not be um, uh, infected. infected. So there are so many possibilities to this. You you wouldn't necessarily be infected with the HIV virus, sorry, the HIV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, the first thing is to get him out of that shell that he has coiled back into because he is, a, he, will, he was or is a, an introvert. So this will be very, very difficult mm -hmm. for him. Very difficult. And she needs to gain his trust all over again, get him to talk to her, 
get him to because once he gets to he, he starts opening up about his fears and I mean that that is a that is a good step that's a very big step mm -hmm. but if he's not talking to anybody you don't know what is going through his head you don't know what he might do but when he starts talking to you at least you can try and predict what he's about or what he will be doing mm -hmm. so get uh, for counselors you need a lot a lot of a lot of counseling a lot of uh, uh, um, psyche revaluation, re you know, getting him to, you know, get out of the negative, you know, feeling because there's, there, there's so many possibilities. He mm. can live, he can live a full life. You can have kids who, who wouldn't come out with HIV because even HIV positive mothers can so have babies yep. who are Free HIV negative. Mm -hmm. So Charlie, if your wife is, is negative and you are positive, Charlie, the possibilities are endless. So, the marriage is no priority now. Put it some way. Then deal with him, his fears, his, his sad state. Get him out of it. Get him to have a positive uh, um, approach. Then you can move on from there. Mm. It's, it's, it's doable. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Olivia, I'd like you to weigh in on this as well. You know, what do you think? I agree. I agree 100% with Ceci. Um, it, hearing you read the story, my mind has gone back to my experience. You know, when you're pregnant, um, you have to undergo all sorts of tests, from STD tests to um, your blood sugar to um, HIV AIDS, like to AIDS tests as a pregnant woman. So I remember my experience um, just before the counselor so they schedule you for, for you to do the test to find out whether you're negative or positive for HIV. And then when they're about to break the news to you, irrespective of whether it's negative or positive, they hook you up with the counselor. Now, this counselor is a professional. Now, you sit in front of the, in front of the counselor and the counselor literally, well, this was not in Ghana. I don't know what they do in Ghana now. But literally, with my experience, this counselor went through like a whole lecture <laughs> <laughs> about so um, HIV AIDS, when you contract it, this is what we'll do, this is what you don't have to do, people live naturally with it normally. Like the lady was just going on and I was sitting there thinking, okay, I haven't had sex with anybody. I know I'm negative. Just give me the results and let me walk out of here. But I was actually negative. But I'm just talking about how the, the information was given to him and how he took it in. And the fact that not everybody will take such news just easily. Like, it's not going to be easy. So, um, like Ceci said, hold on with regards to the marriage. I think you, you did say that you love him to bits and you don't want to... You don't want to lose him. So I think that you need to give him time. People process information differently. They process plans. This plan to him is definitely bad news. So he needs time to process it. And depending on how it was told to him, he needs counseling. He needs a lot of counseling. It's not going to come easy. It's not going to come overnight. And he needs to accept that this is what the situation is. Like they, they say, when you have a lot of... Um, when you have people go to rehab centers and um, to enable them go through the healing process or the, the, you know, to enable them get out of the addiction, they need to accept the state in which they are in. So they, 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 just, they come up and they say, okay, my name is Olivia and whatever, I love too much sugar or something. Hi, but they, they basically admit the state in which they are in. Because that's all part of the psychological process. Because once you admit it, you're also ready to get help to be able to move on to the next step. Right now, he's in denial phase. Everything means nothing to him. Nobody means anything to him. He's just done with life. He just doesn't care. So I think that you need to also give yourself time. Okay, two things. Give yourself time and also give him time to ac accept what's happening. Hmm. Give, give yourself time. I mean, I don't expect you to put all your eggs in one bag. I can understand. You love him. But then he's one of to ever recover from the situation in which he's in. He probably wants to die alone and all of that. So you also can't spend the rest of your life brooding over one man 
who doesn't even want to, to, to continue with his life. I really don't think that's fair on you and that's fair on your family. Okay, so um, just have a proper think about it. Um, give him time to go through the healing process and by all means, um, um, encourage him, find professional help, proper counselors, because he needs a lot of talking to, to be able to understand that life can actually go on. And it's only then that you start looking at things differently and you start looking at things um, out of the box. The other thing too, is when I was just talking about this, something just came to mind. I'm wondering, how is he like um, when it comes to attraction between you and him? How is it like, is he like, I don't know, sexually attracted to you in any way? I know this might sound like over the bar, but like a lot of things are coming to mind. Um, Cause I don't know, just in case, just in case, just make sure, because you see, you did say that you guys did not believe in premarital sex and me, I preach pre uh, like stay against, you know, you know, don't have sex Excellent. and all of that. Mm -hmm. But there has to be some kind of attraction whereby, you know, um, at some point in time, there's, there's something for you to know that, hey, Charlie, this guy is really into me like that. Because you need to know and you need to make sure that Charlie, you're getting into something that's more. What if he's pretending that he didn't know he had HIV AIDS? What if he's not even into women like that? What if, like, like there's so many things. You know, people can just sort of string you along and make it look like, oh, they're not, you know, really the problem. And the world is such a crazy, crazy, crazy place. So just make sure that you're dotting all your I's, crossing all your T's, making sure that this guy is who he says he is. He really, you know, but it will all take time. That's why I'm saying give it time and everything will unfold. But by all means, if you're ready to make it work, I mean, I don't see why it shouldn't work. I take it one day at a time. Right. Okay. Um, let's bring in Claudia. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, is having HIV um, a big deal for you? For me, I mean, HIV is not a death sentence. And I think we've come a long way with signs. Um, from how I see it, he's dealing with acceptance issues. So he's just been given this big blow. He's planning the next phase of his life with a woman that he, we assume he loves. So it will take a lot of time and a lot of signs for him to accept where he is now. And he can only get it from the experts. The lady can only support him and encourage him. And the two of them can go for the counseling together because now he has to accept it from a psychological and a scientific point of view that is safe for the two of them to be together. Because if I understood you, he's, he's afraid that he's putting her at risk. Mm -hmm. So he needs that assurance to know that it's safe. We know it's safe. Everybody knows it's safe. But when it's coming from an expert, it holds more value and more substance. So they can only deal with it from a scientific point of view with counselors, with therapists especially, and also live in the now. They should forget about the wedding, the future, and try to live in the moment to try and sort things out. Um, talk, 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 talk. Because now I'm sure he's going through a lot of anxiety and depression so your life is about ending and he's probably thinking about himself now and how he can live day to day so you should just take it easy live in the moment but i would also ask difficult questions we've not been having sex so how long have you had this hiv mm -hmm. and marriage is about trust <laughs> we've been abstaining i mean you can get hiv from all other sources but i think as humans, instinctively, the first thing that comes to mind is sex. So I would be curious. I would want to dig more and know more about this guy and ask more questions. I feel she's too eager because she feels the guy is the only option. He's a keeper. But you don't know what is out there for you. So she needs to keep an open mind about these things and see if it's even worth the journey. If it's worth the journey, ask the right questions because there has to be accountability. Fine, he has HIV, you're going through therapy, you're going through counseling, but there should be some form of accountability and open communication about how he thinks he got there and the way forward. Have those difficult conversations, but in a safe space with an expert. I would go for the science and psychology of it. Mm -hmm. just to assure him that it's safe to move on. Right. I'll just piggyback off something you said, Claudia, because I, yeah. you know, since I read the story, it's also been like running through my mind. 
for some reason, I do not believe that he didn't know he was HIV positive. Possible. Mm. I, mean, I could be wrong. Sneaky. Yeah, but I, I, I don't. I'm not buying it. I think he knew. I think he was waiting for this, you know, maybe an opportunity to tell her. But of course, since he fell in love with this girl and everything seemed to go well and she was okay with the fact that they weren't going to be have like premarital sex and all that, he was waiting for her to fall in love with him properly mm. and then possible. find out and pretend like he didn't know. I it could be wrong, possible. but I feel like, <laughs> I can't help but feel like that is, that's actually what went on. Either way, it's neither here nor there. She still loves him. Um, she wants to be with him. Your question is, how do you convince him that he can live a normal life? Luckily, there's a lot of literature out there. There are videos. There's, there are professionals you can speak to who can volunteer information that could help him just calm down and, and realize that, Charlie, all is not lost. You know, As Ceci said in the beginning, having HIV these days is not a death sentence. You just need to do certain um, things to you know, have a full, live a full and meaningful life. Um, so that, that isn't really um, a problem. How do you get him to open up to you about his fears? You need to give him time. Um, and especially if he was really hiding this from you. Uh, yeah. You need to give him time. When he's, <laughs> he's ready to speak, you know, yeah. he will. But just give him the assurance that you will be there for him. My two cents, like, come what may. So good luck with that. Let's read a couple of comments. Um, Lucy says... Sorry about what you're both going through, but I'll advise you to be strong. Show him that you love and care. Don't leave him alone because he can even develop negative thoughts about life and may attempt to end his life. Wishing you both, both the best. Uh, Ziblim says, oh, I'm touched. May God make it easy for you guys. I mean, uh, Nana says, let him take the test at different labs. There could be a mistake somewhere. Lena says, get a counselor for you both. You both need one. It's good you're sticking around. He'll bounce back when he comes to the realization that malaria even kills faster than HIV. Ira says, uh, he knew he was positive from the onset. People pretend, though. Just don't force him. God is trying to take him out of your life. Don't force and stay where God knows you have no business at. Marriage isn't a joke, <laughs> madam. Martin says, your kind of positivity can make Africans get the cure for COVID. What if he knew his status, hence his no-sex stance? Guys, uh, guys who agree to no sex till marriage are the type who can be president of the U.S. Wow. Please don't always trust the humility of people in situations, in situations like this. Okay. Rachel says, wow, wow. I don't even know what type of um, the words to use because I'm speechless. You love him very much and still want to be with him, whether it's good or bad god bless you for your kind heart really but let him know it's never too late and there's absolutely nothing that god cannot do tell him to have faith in god and be open with you as well and finally benassi says if he's taken his arvs properly after some time his viral load will go down and become undetectable that way he's still positive but can't transmit the virus thank you so much for watching sister sister on your favorite city tv now don't forget if you want some more exciting content you can always subscribe to our youtube channel we call it the city tube and don't forget to click on the bell to receive notifications for fresh updates sister sister every friday at 9 p.m only on city tv